Welcome to this video production from the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. I am Hanin Ghaddar, the Friedman Fellow at the Institute. February 2023 marked the second anniversary of the assassination of Lebanese writer, filmmaker, and human rights activist Luqman Slim. On the occasion of the anniversary, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights criticized the Lebanese government for failing to find and prosecute his killers. The U.S. Ambassador to Lebanon, Dorothy Shea, called Luqman a fierce advocate for democracy and for the right of people to live in peace. She urged Lebanese authorities to bring his killers to justice. Luqman was an outspoken critic of Hezbollah and suffered a constant drumbeat of threats from the Shia terrorist group, which is widely believed responsible for his killing. He kept going, knowing that the threat is getting bigger and bigger, until his assassination in February 2021. Today, we welcome Monica Borkman, the widow and the colleague of Luqman Islim. Monica is the director of Umam, and she and Luqman's sister and family have been working very hard since the moment Luqman was assassinated to reveal the truth and hold the criminals accountable. Welcome, Monica. Good to see you. Hello, Hanin. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, it's already two years and uh, not a lot has been done. I mean, um, six weeks before Lokman was assassinated, another assassination took place uh, of somebody called Joseph Bejani, and his file is already closed. So what I can, I'm mentioning this just to say, there is maybe in Lebanon one positive thing that our investigation is still ongoing. It has not been closed by the investigative judge. But until today, and I mean, we are talking two years after the assassination of Lokman, nobody has been accused and nobody has been arrested. And this is a question of political will. I mean, what we know from the dossier is that somehow the intelligence of the ISF, they have been doing to a certain extent, they have been doing their work. Because I mean, from the file, and this was also published by a journalist, we know today that when Lokman moved to, uh, to the South, when he drove to the South, that he was followed by five cars. We have the plates of the cars. We know how the perpetrators communicated with each other. So there are many details we know if you want, but the point is that nobody wants to turn it politically. I mean, nobody, they have the technical means to do to a certain extent an investigation but nobody is trying to turn it politically. I have been questioned for eight hours by the intelligence of the ISF, the Lebanese police. And I mean, all questions were personal. I mean, I'm not saying they shouldn't ask any personal questions. Of course, they can ask personal questions. It's part of the investigation. But in the same time, they should have been asking political questions. I mean, this assassination, as you said, it came not out of the blue. There is a long story and of uh, threats, intimidation, and I will only mention two examples. Already in 2012, I mean, now 11 years ago and nine years before his assassination, the newspaper al Akbar, which is close to Hezbollah, had a whole campaign against the so-called, um, no, against the independent Shia, and they called them uh, the Shia of the um, American embassy. And uh, I mean, it was a call for, what was published was a call for murder. In 2019, and this was um, in the third month of the uprising here in Lebanon, which started on the 17th of October, 2019, in December, uh, without making a long story short, a tent where public discussions were held was burned down. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were having on Lukman's 
home, uh, home, a lot of sweats publicly displayed. I remember, I remember. And I mean, in this moment also, Lokman broke his silence. He never liked to uh, answer questions about fear or whatever, but he wrote an open letter saying, if anything is happening, I mean, I make Hassan Nasrallah from Misbola and Nabi Beri from Amal responsible. And he asked for protection from the state. And of course this protection didn't come. So just to mention this, the, his Monica, I have, I, want, I have a follow-up question on this. So yes. he asked for protection, and this is something important that you mentioned, the fact that he asked for protection. And we have been hearing here a lot in Washington that the U.S. has been sending a lot of support, financial and technical support, to the Lebanese army and recently to the ISF. Have, and you're saying that these people have provided protection for the Lebanese figures many times because of, you know, they're very important people, but people like Kukman who has been threatened, they did not uh, threaten him. Uh, sorry, they did not protect him. So in this case, why do you, th do you think that the U.S. should pursue this kind of um, aid to the Lebanese armed forces and the Lebanese uh, internal uh, forces? Uh, if they cannot protect activists like Lokman, what should be done here? Should it be conditional? Should it stop? Should uh, another way, uh, another mechanism work for this aid? What do you think should happen in that case? I mean, uh, I at, today I would really call for the US, uh, of the, the government of the US, uh, to make pressure. I mean, Lokman asked for protection. Uh, the ISF and the Lebanese army are both trained and getting, as you said, support from the US. And this gives the US government a real mean, a real tool to pressure. Mm. And I really hope uh, this tool would be used. I mean, at least, uh, I mean, hopefully in the future, maybe to protect other figures if they are in immediate danger or if they are receiving threats. But in the case of Lokman, it should be used to make pressure that we can move forward with the investigation. Yes. And I mean, okay. I'm uh, Lokman and me. I mean, we have been working on political assassinations in the, through yes. our organization Umam, and uh, I never believed that I would somehow be standing on the other side and directly be implicated. So yes. from day one, I have been calling for an independent. Uh, international investigation because political assassinations in Lebanon have never brought the, the perpetrators mm. to, to, to prison. And I mean, they have never been properly uh, investigated. And today, I'm not saying, uh, I mean, I, we are continuing with our local investigation, but in the same time, I'm calling for an international fact-finding mission, which mm. would include the port explosion, but also the last three political assassinations, including the one of Lokman. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking the international community, um, uh, yeah, to widen the mandate of a fact-finding mission for the port explosion to include the three assassinations. Mm -hmm. And only an investigation can prove if these assassinations are linked to the port explosion or not. And now, very importantly, even if they are not linked, I'm really I'm asking that they will nevertheless be investigated. Yes. And here, coming back to the support of the US government to the ISF and the LAF, Lebanese army, there there is really a tool to pressure to help us also to move forward with a UN fact-finding mission. So why do you think here, when you talk about the UN, and you, we know earlier that earlier this month, the UN rapporteur asked about the investigation and uh, inquired with the Lebanese government about Lokman Slim's inv uh, uh, investigation. So 
while they are saying that, at the same time, we know also that Luqman was taken, not killed, he was killed somewhere else, but taken from an area that was also under the uh, uh, UNIFIL uh, mandate, which is the French UNIFIL. And the UN is calling for the investigation. And so why there hasn't been any cooperation internally within the UN in order to get the UNIFIL French battalion to do something about what they have? We see that today that the French excuse is that they have never been asked by the Lebanese government to provide anything. But of course, the Lebanese government is not going to ask for anything because they wa don't want to reveal the truth. So where's the UN's role here, like well, between the UNIFIL's uh, passive role and the other people in the UN who are trying to do something? I mean, I have been calling, uh, I have been meeting uh, with the responsible of the UNIFIL, the former mm. responsible and the current responsible, and yes, I mean, uh, they are expecting, and this is by law, that they will receive a letter from the Lebanese uh, Justice Ministry or Foreign Ministry informing them that a crime happened in their territory. But mm. I mean, of course, they know they will never get the letter. So mm. they're really also the international community or the UN, they have to reconsider a little bit their functioning because I mean, it's a uh, okay, they tell me, bring us this letter or make this letter happen. But I mean, they, they will know exactly like I know that I will never get this letter. So, yeah. uh, and I mean, the French contingent is there. It's just one kilometer and a half far away from the house where Lukman or from the place where Lukman was kidnapped. I have been there. I have Yani, from the terrace of the house of his friends, you can see the building where is a French contingent. And I mean, of course, there have been cameras and we mm -hmm. want to. So we haven't seen any and of the I mean, footage. It's the whole Nobody situation. has seen no, the footage. Didn't get the footage. And I mean, this whole, uh, this whole situation is just absurd. And I mean, I would also like to remind that in December, a uni an Irish Unifield soldier was also killed. And uh, he was almost killed in the same region where Lukman was found, yeah. which is outside Unifield. And I mean, in my opinion yeah. also, uh, at least the assassination of Lukman happened again. He was kidnapped in Unifil area, but he was assassinated outside Unifil. Outside the Unifil area. To implicate too much the Unifil. No, the Unifil at least will have footage of who was there when he was taken. That is more than enough for us to know. I want to ask you a question about accountability here. And you're working as Umam. Foundation and Luqman Islim Foundation, there's been a lot of work actually on collective memory and the memory of the war, but also on accountability, especially when it comes to the civil war in Lebanon, and now after Luqman's assassination and the port. And the question of accountability is a big question, because we know that ever before even the civil war, every assassination that happened, no one did anything to find the perpetrator no one was held accountable for political assassinations in Lebanon from before the civil war. We're talking before the 70s. So this is a big deal. Without accountability, more crimes will be done. This kind of culture of violence will continue. So my question here is, with your general work on accountability, we know that there was one situation where the uh, Hariri's case, where the assassination of former Prime Minister Rafi al-Hariri was taken to The Hague, and there was a special tribunal in Lebanon, which took uh, around uh, 20 years, a little bit less than 20 years. And uh, finally, the special tribunal revealed the killers. So would that be enough for you, knowing that the current situation in Lebanon, the killers will not be arrested, but at least we, people will know who did it. Would that be enough for you? 
Uh, no, I want real justice. And uh, what, why I'm asking, I mean, I'm not saying now we need another tribunal. I mean, we will see what we need. What mm. we need for the moment is a UN fact-finding mission, mm -hmm. and uh, which is not replacing the local investigation, but is adding to the local investigation and is uh, able to produce evidence yeah. and i mean my goal of course is to have real justice what is real justice perpetrators in prison and okay. i mean uh, um, for me it's not enough to know who uh, who pulls the trigger i mean i uh, i want to know why and i want to know who gave the order and they want both to be held accountable and punished for their crimes. Absolutely. Why do you think finding the killer of Lukman Islim and holding them accountable important for Lebanon, the US and the international community? Why it is important? Mm -hmm. uh, it's important to stop this culture of impunity. And I mean, not giving not rendering justice to Lokman mm. is just giving the green light to the perpetrators to continue with their crimes. Mm. And I mean, for years, no justice has been done. And, uh, and in this sense, assassinations have been continuing. And no, I mean, I know also the international uh, community is seeking for stability in, uh, in yeah. Lebanon for different reasons, maybe Europe not to have more refugees. But the fact is that allowing the culture of impunity to continue has brought no stability to the whole region, not only to Lebanon. Sure. So there must be a stop, a full stop. And uh, Lokman was uh, an international well-known person and um, I mean, uh, it's, uh, thanks God, for the moment, the last assassination. But here we really need, we need to make a stop. And yeah. Um, yeah. And it's in the sense, I mean, really for a long time, making kind of compromises with the people who are governing this country um in the in the name of stability it has been proven not to work oh, yeah. i mean we have never been in such a catastrophic situation like we are today yes it's always this uh, this justice the formula that everybody gives you in lebanon is justice either justice or stability and the problem today when you always choose stability over justice it leads to instability yes and I think uh, justice could lead to stability. And yes. I mean, on a personal level, let me just say this. I know there are also a lot of efforts done to help the Lebanese judiciary to get independent and, and, and. But personally, I don't have the time to wait until a failed state becomes a non-failed state and we have an independent justice here. I yes. just don't have the time. And I think also all the victims of the port explosion or the families of the victims, they also don't have the time. We need justice now. And justice is the way to stability. Definitely. This is a perfect, perfect uh, closure for this. Uh, thank you very much, Monica. This was very, very touching, very important topics we covered today. And uh, we'll definitely, your voice will reach many, many people in Washington through this video. There are a number of policy recommendations that come out from this conversation. One is how 
the U.S. can pressure the Lebanese internal security forces and the Lebanese armed forces to actually protect the innocent people and the victims, not the perpetrators and the aggressors. The U.S. has been helping financially and technically the Lebanese armed forces and recently the internal security forces with aid. And uh, this is a leverage, a big leverage that the U.S. has in Lebanon. Besides, besides security and military assistance, the U.S. has helped Lebanon with humanitarian assistance after the Beirut port explosion and after the financial collapse. Luqman Slim asked for protection before he was assassinated. He asked for protection from the Lebanese armed forces and from the internal security forces, both institutions that the U.S. funds. Luqman did not get any protection. No one responded to his pleas. For example, this case could have been avoided, this crime could have been avoided if the U.S. leverage was used in order to push the Lebanese armed forces and the internal security forces to protect Luqman and other activists. There are other activists today in Lebanon that need to be protected. There are other activists who have stopped talking after Luqman was assassinated because they know that no one is held accountable and they know that they are not protect protected. The U.S. should use this leverage in order to push the Lebanese armed forces and the internal security forces in order to protect these people so they will be able to have a bigger margin of maneuver in action. Also, the U.S. can use this leverage in order to pressure the Lebanese government and security forces to move on with Luqman Slim's investigation. We need to know the truth, and this leverage should not be wasted. It is in the interest for the United States to protect these activists who are working day and night, risking their lives in, in order to protect the values of democracy and free speech, the core values of American democracy. اليوم تحدثنا مع مونيكا بيرغمان مرته وشريكته للقمان سليم خبرتنا اليوم مونيكا شو صار بالتحقيقات بخصوص مقتل لقمان سليم وكيف انه اليوم بلبنان الموضوع صار كتير مسيس والموضوع صار بمحل ما انه في قرار سياسي انه ما يصير في تحقيق بجريمة قتله للقمان سليم بالموضوع الدولي في اليوم كتير تعاطف دولي مع هذا الموضوع ولكن ما في شغل جدي بهذا الموضوع وخاصة أنه من بعد من قتل لقمان سليم كمان صار في تحرك لأهالي ضحايا انفجار المرفأ يلي اليوم كمان عم بيطالبوا بتحقيق دولي وتحقيق شفاف بهذا الموضوع مونيكا اليوم جربت تربط هيدول الموضوعين تربط مقتل لقمان سليم اللي هو اغتيال سياسي بجريمة انفجار المرفأ يلي هي وصفتها اليوم كمان بموضوع إن هي كمان جريمة وممكن كتير تكون جريمة اغتيال سياسي لأنه كمان تسياسات وكمان الأشخاص اللي مت... ال... 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 وكمان الأشخاص اللي هن جزء من التحقيق بهذا الموضوع هن سياسيين لبنانيين واليوم واضح إنه في جهة واحدة عم تحمي المجرمين وجهة واحدة عم بتهدد العدالة وعم بتهدد اليوم معرفة الحقيقة بلبنان بخصوص هيدي الجريمتين وهيدي الجهة يمكن يكونوا الجريمتين مرتبطين ويمكن ما يكونوا مرتبطين ولكن ضروري يكون في شغل وتحقيق لنشوف إذا مرتبطين ولا لا ولكن بالمحلين ضروري اليوم يكون في شغل على الداخل اللبناني وخاصة على المؤسسات العسكرية والأمنية بلبنان من شان تتابع هذا التحقيق لأنه هن لوحدهم ما ممكن يتابعوا هذا التحقيق ولكن الولايات المتحدة والدول الأوروبية اليوم عم بتقدم مساعدات للجيش اللبناني وعم بتقدم مساعدات للأمن الداخلي اليوم هيدي المساعدات وخاصة بظل الأزمة الاقتصادية اللي عم نشهدها اليوم هيدي المساعدات ضرورية كتير والولايات المتحدة والغرب تحديدا بهمه اليوم أنه يكون في أمن بلبنان ولكن هيدي المساعدات اليوم اللي عم توصل لهذه المؤسسات كيف فينا نستخدمها؟ هيدي القوة اليوم اللي عنده إياها عنده إياها الغرب تجاه هيدي المؤسسات لما لقمان سليم طلب حماية من هيدي المؤسسات طلب حماية لأنه عارف إنه هو رح رح يتم اغتياله هيدي المؤسسات ما تحركت في غيره اليوم بعدهم عايشين ويمكن يقتلوهم بكرة هيدي المؤسسات لازم تحميهم واليوم كمان الغرب وتحديدا الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية لازم تكون كتير واضحة برسالتها اليوم لهذه المؤسسات الأمنية أنه نحن عم نساعدكم ولكن أنتم كمان بكون تعملوا واجباتكم وتحموا هذه هذول النشطاء إذا ما صار هذا الشيء اليوم 
هيدي الفكرة بمعنى أنه نحن بدنا نعمل كومبرومايز بدنا نعمل بدنا نقبل بالذل وبدنا نقبل بالظلم وبدنا نقبل بالقتل لأنه بهمنا اليوم يكون في أمن بلبنان أمن واستتباب شو يعني لما يكون اليوم إذا ما في إذا ما في إذا 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 ما حدا اليوم تحمل مسؤولية هذه الجريمة إذا ما كان في تحقيق عادل بهدول الجرائم كيف بده يكون في عدل وكيف بده يكون في استتباب للامن؟ مستحيل، ما بتزبط هيدي المعادله الا اذا عن جد العداله اليوم قدرنا نوصل لها.